Hey friends, it's Dawn with TwiceYearedSheep.com and today I'm going to show you how I do research. When I research um, photographs and how to um, create beautiful photographs and ideas for marketing and things that I want to do for my own lifestyle images that I'm going to be using in my shop, this is how I go about researching. And um, pretty much I'm looking at other successful businesses and I am borrowing their ideas from their high powered marketing teams that are really good at this sort of stuff. And I'm going to adapt that to my own business and to my own yarns and my own stitch markers and my own fiber that I have in my shop. I'm gonna share my screen with you and we're gonna go over to the internet. Okay, the first thing that I do is I'm gonna find a business that I admire um, and I'm gonna to go to their website. I'm gonna take a look at the pictures that they have on their main screen and the things that they have going on here. So yesterday we talked about flat lays and the formula that I use, the recipe that I use to create flat lays. That came the majority from really looking at these photographs and the things that I see on websites and on Instagram feeds for the companies that I admire. So this is Knit Picks, which is a very large company that sells yarn and they do phenomenal marketing. If you aren't already, get on their email list so that you can look at how they do their marketing, how they sell their yarns and um, the promotions that they do because they're most of the time, they're just brilliant. They really, really are. But we're going to research their Instagram feed today. So we're going to go to nitpicks.com and we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the website. And right here, um, we've got our social um, links and we're going to go to Instagram. So we're going to go, we're going to go to Instagram and we're going to take a look at what they're doing on their feed and the flat lays that they are doing. And we're going to look for all those seven recipe pieces and how nitpicks is putting them together in their photographs. So I showed you this one last time and this is a good example of parallel. So we've got our parallel lines right here and our parallel lines right here. Um, we've got 90 degrees of this to this, which makes a very dynamic photo. We've got repeating sameness of repeating the four skeins that are exactly the same, which makes a beautiful photo. Um, we're gonna scroll down. Right here we've got circles. We've got a circle that um, is created from things that are very much not circles. Uh, we've also got the parallel lines from the wood. This may be why people really like using um, a wood as a background is because it automatically creates those beautiful parallel lines, which naturally creates a gorgeous kind of dynamic photograph. I love this sheep over here. Okay, so this sheep, we've got, we've got parallel lines of our two lines of round balls. We've got circles, which each ball is its own circle. We've got repeating sameness because we're repeating the shape many times, but we're also juxtaposing with something very different, which is the background of this sheep, where we've got the balls that create the, the wool on the sheep. And so we've already got like, oh, I don't know, four of our seven things in this photograph, which is fantastic. Okay, let's find another flat lay. Um, right here, we've got a triangle between these objects, the, the book and our stuffed animal and our teething ring form a nice triangle right here. Um, right here in this photo, we've got um, a juxtaposition of our smooth, beautiful skein right here and our leaves and our flowers in the background, which are kind of spiky and, and have a lot of edges. Um, it almost creates a 90 degree angle between them, but not quite because we've got this 45 degree angle right here and a slightly lesser degree angle right here. 
So we've got our angles, we've got our juxtaposition. It's a beautiful photograph. Um, we're repeating our, our parallel lines right here and repeating our sameness, but also juxtaposing the differences. Let's see. Um, here's our photograph where they were creating the circles right here. All of these circles repeating, 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 repeating all of the circles to form another circle. Great. Right here, we've got all you, know, you can almost say we've got 90 degree angles because we've got this square shape that um, against this edge right here. So we've got and it forms a 90 degree and a 90 degree and a 90 degree and a 90 degree. Um, this one is going this direction. This one is going this direction. We've got the differences in the textures. We've got the differences in the sizes. And we've, al we've almost made ourselves a little triangle right here in the corner. Look at that. Okay, here we've got some circles. We've got the circle from the coffee cup. We've got the circle from the big bowl here. We're juxtaposing our smaller objects with our larger object, and we've made a triangle. Look at that. Okay, so this one, I don't know whether you could see, it has 10,000 views. Now, um, it's a little video where they just made the, the balls turn in circles, which is great. But I want you to take a look at all of the things that they've got going on in here. So we've got our 90 degrees because we've created kind of this square and we've got a 90 degree here and a 90 degree here and a 90 degree here. We've got our parallel lines all lined up. But our, our parallel lines and our square is made up of all of these juxtaposed different circles. So it really does not surprise me that this, this photo has received so many views because it's hitting a whole bunch of our, our rules, our recipe items to make a beautiful flat lay. Okay, let's take a look. Yep, again, circles making a square, love that. Let's take a look at a different company. We're gonna look at webs. Um, Webs is a huge mega yarn store. They don't have um, necessarily any lines of their own that I know of. They sell a lot of other brands, um, but they've got a very active Instagram, Instagram feed. So we're going to scroll to the bottom and we're going to find Instagram. And let's take a look at what they've got going on in their feed. Um, because their style is, is a little different. So um, here we've got a, a curve line, which we didn't talk about, but that's another thing is kind of an S curve line is a big thing. We've got a giant circle just in the center of this photo. Um, this one, we've got some triangles going on that you can form. We've got a 45 degree angle with the line of this paper to the frame of the picture. We've almost got a 45 degree angle with a lot of these yarn skeins. Always nice. Let's see. What else can we find for a flat lay? Okay, so this one's also a flat lay. We've got a giant circle filled with smaller circles and the whole thing is on a 45 degree angle. So this one, we're kind of creating concentric circles out of things that are not circles, but are sort of circles. Uh, we've got kind of these ray lines going here. 
and a massive repeating of sameness. All of these skeins are the same size, same shape, um, creates a beautiful photo. Um, there's that one with the parallel lines that we looked at in the video before, or with the, the 45 degree angle with the circles in it. If you want to see what Instagram likes, what the knitting community likes best, you can always just hover over the picture and see the number of people who have hard, who have favored it or who have commented on it. Um, that's all. That's usually a good gauge of what at least Instagram likes, um, the sort of photographs that Instagram would like to see more of. Those are always good things to look at. Um, let's take a look at Love Knitting, which is another big um, yarn website. Oh, I want, let's go to main page. I want to see your links to your Instagram. Apparently it's the never ending scroll. There we go. Okay, we want Instagram. Notice you can also look at Facebook or Pinterest. Pinterest is, is a little different because um, for specific companies, they tend to um, not do flat lays as much on, on Pinterest or um, there's a lot of tutorials and knitting patterns and things like that. Um, we can always do another video where we look at Pinterest specifically for that different shape of a flat lay because it's longer, it's not square. Okay, so love knitting. What does love knitting have going on here? Okay, so this one is not yarn, which is nice. Um, it's got a beautiful sweater over here that's at a slight angle to the frame. Not quite a 45 degrees, but almost. But the sleeve right here, notice, makes a 45 degree angle to the frame. And we're going to create a triangle between our balls of yarn and our sweater. Um, we're going to juxtapose differences because we've got our large sweater and our two smaller balls of yarn. We're also creating parallel lines between the line of this sleeve and our two balls of yarn right here that are also at a 45 degree angle, which is, you know, a beautiful photograph. Although this moth right here on the ball of yarn is really bothering me. And, um, at least it looks like a moth to me, and I, I'm i kind of cringing now looking at that. <laughs> okay, let's see. What other ones do we have? Um, this one's really interesting. Okay, so we've got, we've got our 45 degree angle for our main object, and then we're juxtaposing that with our smaller objects off to the side. See, we've got kind of a triangle right here between these objects. And we've got kind of a triangle right here between these objects. Um, we've got this is almost for is a parallel line to the line of the edge of the of the bag. This one is at an angle to the edge of the bag. So we've got both angles and parallel lines. And we've got some triangles and we've almost got a circle here with our um, the handle of our bag. Okay, this one is more of a typical flat lay that you would think of for, for a business or for, um, for jewelry. You see this type of flat lay a lot more, which is a tabletop. So we've got our, our objects that are kind of forming a triangle right here or also a triangle right here. Um, we've got our nice circle in the corner um, from our cup and a circle from our basket juxtaposed with the longer lines of the hanks of yarn. Um, this is very parallel, you know, 90 degree angle almost to the frame of the picture. Um, our hat is, and we're going to juxtapose that with, they've put this and this at angles. So this is a 45 degree angle, this basket right here with these skeins. And this is another 45 degree angle which juxtaposes nicely with the 90 degree angle that we've got going on right here. Plus, we've got our parallel lines from our wood on our table. OK, 
Okay. So. Okay, this one's just kind of fun. Because we've got a parallel line between these. We've created, we've got triangles from chips. We've got triangles from our yarns. We're juxtaposing the soft yarn with the crunchy chips. It's kind of like when you're cooking, you know, that you want to make sure that you've got a little bit of sweet and a little bit of salty and a little bit of crunchy going on in there. Um, it's what makes an interesting food dish. This is what's going to make an interesting flat lay. So this is how I do my research. It's really just staring at a lot, a lot, a lot of pictures. Um, if I do this on my phone, then I'll save pictures to a, to a folder and I'll just keep saving pictures until I almost go cross-eyed, that I'm staring at them so long and that patterns start to form. You start to see, oh, well, the internet really likes these ones that have this kind of dark grungy look to them. Or the internet really likes when I when things are laid out in a square. It, it seems to really like that. Maybe I'll try that. And so I have folders on my computer that are just other people's marketing, um, other businesses, Instagram feeds, or um, their email marketing. And I just stare at it and scroll through and look at all of the pictures and just kind of, they they end up in the back of my mind. So when I'm ready to, to lay out my photographs, that I've got kind of that background in my head and I'm kind of looking at it and thinking about it and I will naturally start to do the most popular sort of styles or the ones that, that really speak to me that the internet also likes. I'm not advocating copying another um, business's style because you want to make sure that your photographs and your flat lay speak to your business's style. You know, having a really grungy Instagram feed when your website is all light and clouds and rainbows and fluffiness is not going to, going to work out very well. Um, but I want you to think about creating those shapes for yourself with your own knitting, your own needles, your own um, yarns, so that you can show off your products to the best of their ability. Okay, so now that we've gone through all this, are you ready to take your business to the next level? Are you ready to really take that hobby to a successful yarn or fiber business? I want you to click on the link down in the description that'll take you to my personal business coaches three-part video series on how to create an incredible product line that will really skyrocket your business. I know it did for mine and I know it can do it for you too. And with that, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.